afternoon, everyone. My name is Bill Bergman. I will be chairing this afternoon's hearing. We're going to go to number 10, MI 2023 006 162 1954 Patterson Avenue. Um, <clears throat> on this case will be two attorneys, Meredith Trego and Matthew McClure, and also Leonard Ruder is a, an attorney for this city. He should be here too. Chair Matthew McClure is coming back in as a panelist now. Thank I'm you. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Mr. Voider and Meredith Trago to put their hands up. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Matt McClure. Yeah, I, Matt, you've already been sworn. Leonard, you've already been sworn. And and just to clarify, the city is not the applicant. We yep. are the property owner by agreement with Fairmont Park Conservancy. They are the applicant and taking the lead on this, but I'm, I'll be here in case there's any questions from the board. Yes. Thank you. All so, the parties have been uh, promoted to panelist chair. Thank you. As stated at the February 21st hearing of this matter, the purpose of the resumptive hearing is for the board to hear public testimony and the recommendation of the City Planning Commission in order to ensure that everyone who wishes to express their position on this matter is given an opportunity to be heard. The board will only be accepting public testimony from individuals or organizations that have not already submitted correspondence to the board stating their position. The lone exception will be the registered community organizations whose boundaries include subject property. They were permitted to, permitted to testify regarding the, the RCO process for this project if they wish. The board will now read into the record the names of the individuals and organizations from whom it has received correspondence regarding their positions in this matter. If your name is not read, into the record and you wish to testify, please raise your hand. The board asks that all testifiers keep their remarks brief, concise, and focus on the requested special exception to remove the heritage trees from subject property. In addition, please avoid repeating comments offered by previous testifiers. Here are people who have sent letters that are in support. Anderson Marks Youth Sports Organization, Council President Kenyatta Johnson, Hunting Park United, NOMO Foundation, Philadelphia Dragons Sport Association, Philadelphia Parks and Recreation, South Philadelphia Sigma Sharks, State Representative Regina Young, Unity in the Community, and Warren Abbott. <clears throat> Here's letters of opposition. Alexander Melnick, Ali Nabinsky, Ali Pluck, Andrew Cicero, Angelo Altamino, Anita George, Anna Sekol, Ann Harvey, Ash Fritz, Audubon, Audubon, Mid-Atlantic, Abigail Miller, Bradford Whitman, Brian Jeans, Brianna Giado, Brina Belford, Brielle Brilani, Britt D Doberg, Brooke Wesley, Karen Cervani, Carly Russ, Catherine Darren, Catherine Roberts, Kathy Van De Root, Charles Blinnick, Charles Murphy, Chris Pico, Chris Wack, Christina Gardner, Christopher Brune, Dena Darris Silverman, Doran Hummel, David Schapanskik, Delaware Valley Ornithic Club, St. Ch Dr. John Chico Baker, Dr. Julia Mitchell, Dr. Wendy Gibson, Gibson. 
Eugene Clarion, Elaine Hughes Jensen, Elu Serpel, Elon Grunberg, Emily Serena, Emmett Wilson, Flo Carmati, Friends of FDR Park, G. Pluck, Gabriel Gubb, Bonji, Garrett Sager, Goyer Palello, Haley Branford, uh, Heather Sevison, Huckle Young, James Stanton, June Pluck, Jane Fishman, Jay Sheffman, Jeffrey Turner, Jennifer Miller, Jennifer Prince, Jess Mercurio, Jemico Cole, John Amadio, Julia Kropik, Karen and Felix Penzula, Karen Leibowitz, Kat Kennan, Kat Weary, Kate Lespina, Caitlin Navaris, Caitlin Rebish, Catherine McGuire, Catherine Rice, Tim Als Brooks, Tim Barbetta, Kristen Kiki Becker, Kristen Junowitz, Christy Glazer, Lori Crandall, Lori Bern Bernister, Lauren McClutchin, McClutchin, Lauren Schiffman, Lily Safran, LJ Brubaker, Lucin Miller, Lynn Gallagher, Mucklin Koch, Malcolm O'Malley, Mark Kaplan, Max Friedman, Megan Anger, Michael Horsey, Miriam Harlan, Nadia Cummings, Neil Patillo, Nicole Hoffman, Nicole Kemmel, Norma Gottlieb, Ali Jem, Ali Zagovich, Packer Park Civic Association, Patricia Yanitz, Richard Guella, Robert Kaponskik, mm. Rita Gitter Munz, Sally Coyne, Sarine Carr, Sharon Taman, Silver Lacello, Stephen Kroll, PhD, <clears throat> Stephanie Barber, Wendy Leapart, Wincote Audubon Society. We will now go to the virtual audience, and I believe we're going to start with the RCO. Is Barbara Capozzi in the audience? Barbara Capozzi, if you're in the virtual audience, there she is. Okay, now her name disappeared, Chair. Okay. Her hand is back up. Okay. She's been unmuted and allowed to speak. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Uh, my name is Barbara Capozzi, C-A-P-O-Z-Z-I. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Of course, yes. And you're you're one of the RCOs, am I correct? Yes, actually both. Okay. RCO. Esteemed, esteemed chair and board, I'll be as brief as possible. Well, no, go Happy ahead, first take the Happy first day of spring. We should all be down at FDR Park now doing a field view because I'm sure that if you saw the gorgeous trees that are to be killed because of this application, you would vote against it as we have. My name's Barbara Capozzi. I'm the president of the Packer Park Civic Association for 30 years. No one wants the job. Um, Packer Park is the lovely community immediately adjacent to FDR Park. I'm also the co-president of the Friends of FDR Park, along with Lin Lindsay Scanapicchio, who will be next. We are firm supporters of the Parks and Rec system for decades, and, pro and I am probably the leading advocate for the FDR Park's revival over the last 25 plus years. I have volunteered thousands of hours, spent thousands of dollars, and this case is ripping my heart out and stomping on it. I can summarize this plan in two words and save you all this reading. Bad karma. I can summarize it in three words, very bad karma. Of all the places in 360 acres to dump toxic turf fields, and that's another subject for another day, the experts picked 
in the midst of 64 huge, gorgeous heritage trees. Heritage trees means they're old, they're 25 inches in diameter or more, multiple branches, and usually at least 30 feet high. And this is the difference between book smart and street smart. Pay attention. Book smart, street smart. Street, street smart should win. Whoever goes, goes along with this bad decision will forever ruin the nature and flow of this beautiful, peaceful park. My neighbors say they moved here to be next to the park, not a noisy, bright lights and ball fields activity center. Just because of the time, energy, good faith, and volunteer efforts that the two RCOs have made, we did not get a lawyer. We did not want to be adversarial to the Parks and Rec and Fairmount Park systems. We naively believed that they would respect us, all of our hard work, our nights, our weekends, meetings, 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 cleaning the park on Sundays, and respect our position in the community on the street and literally boots on the ground in this community with park users and neighbors. After all, we are the people who get the complaints. We're the first line of defense. We object to Mr. McKeeler's continued characterization that the RCOs delayed this matter. Once we received, received the exact plans, which was mid-November, we immediately asked Fairmount Park and Parks and Rec for a meeting to discuss the many questions that we had. We, we know from our constituents what questions people will ask. So in order to get those answers first, we had to meet with them. Very important issues, traffic, security plan, why only 170 parking spaces, et cetera. We got no response. We wrote again, we are always polite and courteous. Always, we requested a meeting. Finally, the date for that meeting was set, not by us, but by the Fairmont Park and Parks and Rec. And it was January 26th, so we did not delay. We asked then, we asked now for a modification of the current plan, so the delay was not on our part. Packer Park Civic has already voted to appeal this decision if it goes against us. Friends of FDR Park has not taken that vote yet. There are many environmental groups also opposed to this and it, its plans in the current state that it's in. I hope that you please read those heartfelt letters as well, especially from the bird people. On behalf of Packer Park Civic only, our neighbors vehemently do not want more traffic, noise, and lights. It's not like we don't have a lot going on down here already. We do. Fairmont Park is giving us fields yet cutting down the very trees that protect us from the noise, the lights, the music that these fields on the northern portion of FDR will generate. So we're getting the fields and they're killing our buffer. Makes no sense. The neighbors were adamant about that and I put forward their opposition. In my role as co-president of the Friends Group, I have tried to compromise with Parks and Rec. This plan for, for the sake of the neighbors. Now, my neighbors are not happy about that compromise, but I am trying to work with everybody. The friends have been trying since November to modify this plan very simply and save a huge number of these large, gorgeous trees that serve as buffers. It's a lose-lose for Packer Park, and it's also a lose-lose for the park. Um, we, have, we have tried to get a meeting with the new head of Parks and Rec, the new commissioner. We had a meeting scheduled for 4 o'clock yesterday. It was canceled right before with no explanation and no request to reschedule. If there's an emergency, you usually say, well, let me reschedule this. That did not happen. So I believe the hardworking volunteers who have kept this park clean and beautiful deserve better than the disrespect and demissive attitude from both Parks and Rec and Fairmount Park Conservancy for us volunteers. This whole process has been one of marginalizing the RCOs, and that's very sad because these are the people who care so much. To summarize, the applicant did not show that there's no reasonable alternative to this plan. We tried and got nowhere. We do have a reasonable alternative. All we ask is a slight shift, same footprint. I know it's already been surveyed. Just shift it over to the west. Lose one field, lose two courts, save a, the beautiful championship tree, save the clubhouse where the friends operate their volunteer activities out of, the children's library, etc. The applicant also did not show that there's no harm to the park and to the neighbors. A traffic study was never done. Um, it was offered to us January 26th. I'm sure that it has not commenced. There's also been no security plan, and we've had an endless vandalism, rowdy teens, and issues ungodly. Uh, in the last in this last week, it was heartbreaking. The beautiful new Annecy Verna playground was taken over by bullies last weekend, and my phone rang off the hook from parents. Very, very upsetting. 
Yes, they call me, not Fairmount Park or Parks and Rec. They have no idea to how to reach those folks in the ivory tower. Please know that the park already has to be closed six to seven times a year on Sundays, closed for further uh, people coming in because it's too packed. Um, and that's not Eagle Sundays. That's other spring Sundays. And it's also many other Sundays are too close for comfort, but it's not closed. Um, the ZBI, this process, not I'm not personally to you, but this process is stifled advocacy. And we did not get a lawyer, which was our mistake. Um, the witnesses went in untouched, and that's unfortunate. It's almost impossible to advocate over Zoom. So please bear with me, I'm almost done. The master plan was a framework. We had no idea the specific placement of the first fields until November, 2023. We asked many questions the parking spaces, the traffic, the security. We had no idea these large, gorgeous trees would be cut for ball fields. No one at the multiple planning meetings in 2018 ever advocated for tournament play or killing trees, just the opposite. However, after COVID, and I'm sure you all know this, times are far different now. There's a decline in civility, a decline in respect, and what looked benign in 2018 is now toxic, controversial, flammable, combustible. No one behaves anymore. There is no respect. So the thought of having all these fields here and no trees to buffer it are pretty upsetting. One of the trees alone is a state champion, 122 inches in diameter and 40 feet high, many, many branches. It's slated to come down. Believe me, if you saw it in person, you would weep. We have shown an alternate plan um, and we advocate for its acceptance. And there is harm to the community and we advocate for the plans and the traffic study to show that. Finally, I have to say this, that we are very, very disappointed at Fairmount Park and the Parks and Rec and the disrespectful and dismissive attitude they have had toward their biggest advocates, the volunteers. Thank you so much for listening. Is there any questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, could the uh, the representative for FDR RCO please come on? That would be Lindsay. Last name beginning with S. I don't want to butcher. Yes, I see her at the bottom. There you go. Thank you. Lindsay Scanapico has been unmuted and allowed to speak. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Good afternoon, Chairman. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lindsay Scanapico. That's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. Last name is Scanapico, S-C-A-N-N-A-P-I-E-C-O. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Chairman. Honorable members of the zoning board and everybody else who has gathered here today, thank you so much. I stand here today as the co-president of the Friends of FDR Park alongside Barb Capozzi. I am not a paid staff member or paid consultant. This is just a park that I love dearly and decided to get more involved in about eight years ago when I joined the Friends of FDR Park. It was clear at the last hearing that we were unable to ask questions of the experts, clarify statements that were made or participate without legal counsel. Therefore, we found legal counsel today. Unfortunately, they were unable to join the meeting today, which is why we requested continuance. It is not to further delay this process. It is really to allow us to have representation at the table. Let me be clear, we are not opposed to the master plan. In fact, we are exceedingly enthusiastic about the opportunity for investment and support within FDR Park. However, our concerns lie with the lack of community input in this specific zoning application and the removal of heritage trees when we believe that there is an alternative plan that would be better for all. While we recognize the thoroughness of the public engagement process in 2018, five years ago, prior to the pandemic, we have found ourselves unable to share concerns in the process today now that details and designs have been developed. When we saw the master plan in 2018, one of the big questions the Friends of the FDR Park Board had and was well documented was regarding the traffic and security plans in the park. The investment sounded great, 
but the operational impacts were critical. Master plans are a framework, and we understood this, but we were told continually that our concerns and questions would be answered in the design phase. This has not occurred. FDR Park has experienced a significant up uptick in visitors, with the number soaring from 2.75 million visitors recorded prior to the pandemic to over 4.5 million visitors last year. The population of the city of Philadelphia, as we all know, is only around 1.5 million people. So this is a really significant regional park. Regular closer, closures already happen in the park due to unsafe conditions caused by excessive traffic. We've had fatalities in the park due to this. We are currently closing the park six to eight times a year in the spring and autumn due to too much traffic. In this zoning application, no traffic or security plan has been presented. And we believe there is a specific detrimental impact by the traffic and congestion this scale facility will bring to the park and surrounding roads. We support the master plan, but we do have concerns about this application. We implore the zoning board to consider a requirement for an alternative that would mitigate these concerns. We have a plan that we believe would save 30% of the heritage trees, 14, of 14 to 15 of the trees specifically. It would give four high quality multi-use courts, three basketball courts, and this parking provision as detail. I also, um, wish to just address some misconceptions and statements that were made on the record that I believe were inaccurate. Um, contrary to the accusations that were made, we have only actively sought information and engaged in dialogue since receiving the plans. We only received the plans on November 14th. We asked questions on November 20th and again on December 18th. We received an email from Fairmount Park Conservancy on January 3rd saying that it would require them until mid-January to get us a response. On January 11th, they asked for a meeting on January 27th. We had that meeting and accommodated their schedules, and we hosted our public RCO meeting two weeks later. We are committed to transparency as a community group. I would also like to clarify for the Zoning Board our process at the public meeting. We have been accused that our process was exclusionary as we only permitted paying members to vote and allow members to be from the city of, and we allow members, I'm sorry, we allow members to be from beyond the city of Philadelphia. As a park that attracts 4.5 million visitors per annum, it's probably actually higher than that because it's just based on cell phone data. It is clear that we are a regionally significant park and we have many supporters from all over the region. We also follow the guidance as outlined in the Park Friends document issued by the Fairmont Park Conservancy, which recommends that you charge people a membership fee in order to be part of a friends group. This is exactly in line with their guidance and recommendations. Otherwise, things would just become a popularity contest suspending on specific issues that are raised. Lastly, I urge the, urge the board to recognize the true value of the area under discussion. It was stated in the previous hearing that it was, quote, an informal dog park, I'm sorry, an informal dog run and, or soil stockpile. That is frankly just not true. This area is used by thousands of people for various recreational activities, birding, picnicking, playing, walking. There's organized walking groups that use this area each and every single week. I was in this area on Sunday and ran into hundreds of people in this part of the park. This is not just a dog run or a soil stockpile. We believe that there is an alternative plan that honors both the spirit of the master plan, a desire for high quality sports fields, as also the concerns of our community. And we urge the zoning board to take that into consideration um, in today's conversation. So thank you very much for the time for us to share our concerns. Thank, thank you for your comments. Um, <clears throat> Go to the virtual audience, please. Chair, we have Cynthia O'Keefe. They have okay. been unmuted and allowed to speak. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Could you, could you state your name and spell, please, for the court stenographer? Yes, it's Cynthia, C-Y-N-T-H-I-A. O'Keefe is O apostrophe K-E-E-F-E. -E. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? Uh, I'm not a neighbor. I live in 
Bergen County, New Jersey, and Ridgewood, and I'm an interested party. And okay. um, all right. So I've, so so let so let me ask you this: uh, Are you for this or against the project? I'm against it. Okay, and give us if if you can give us something different than what we've heard from the last two people, if that's possible. Sure, I certainly will. Um, Thank you. As a resident of Ridgewood, New Jersey, um, I'm increasingly concerned about the many parallels um, that are, are projects within not only New Jersey, obviously it's the very same situation that is happening with this park. And as one of the earlier callers spoke before, it's bad karma. Um, the Fairmont Park Conservancy um, website says you believe in the power of open spaces and the importance of nature to urban communities. But from the what I understand about this project is that you're taking nature away. And so leveling trees that provide clean air and then installing plastic playing fields, which we all know um, have been you know, understood to be toxic. And every day information comes out about the toxic nature and forever chemicals that- but Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on one minute, please. Mm -hmm. We've had te we've had testimony about that. So could you concentrate on what you think's different that you know about this project? Well, what I know about this project is that, um, well, I'm, I, I don't know if there's a stormwater runoff um, plan okay. related to the toxic turf fields. I also, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm against the leveling of the um, heritage trees. And yep. so I wanted to state my objection okay. for the record. And um, obviously you you seem like you want to cut me off. So if that's the um, case. No, I don't want to cut you off. But what I'm trying to do is concentrate on other points in the, that have already been made. So no, I don't want to cut you off. Okay, well, to sum it up, I don't agree with leveling that amount of trees. We obviously need them okay. for our environment. It's part of what should be considered important in an open space plan. And again, I believe turf is toxic and you should reevaluate uh, those plants. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to call us. Uh, next uh, hand, please. Chair, we have Candace, last name beginning with an L. They okay. have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you please state your name and spell it for the court's stenographer? Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's Candice, C-A-N-D-I-C-E. Uh, my last name is Detore, D-E, capital T-O-R-E. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. Okay. Um, please proceed. Are you for or against this project? I am 100% against this project. Okay. Well, 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 thank you. Could If that's the case, could you try to concentrate on something different than what we've already heard, because we have heard from the two first two presentations were kind of inclusive. So if you can think of something different. Well, with all due respect for, I think my opinion as a local resident is just as valid, but I promise you I will keep it quick. I just want to say I've sat by for years and years and watched more and more areas of my beloved park get taken over for private sports fields that then become okay. inaccessible to the public. The okay. last thing we need in our neighborhood is more sports fields. And to think that someone thinks that sports fields would better accompany one of the oldest houses, yes, the oldest, in South Philadelphia would be better than that trees is an absolute disgrace. We don't need more people coming in our neighborhood. We don't need more sports fields. And none of us here in this meeting will be alive to see any of the newly planted trees become the size of the trees that you want to cut down. Not you okay. specifically. And so, yes, I'm against it, and I'm here to protect my beloved park. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. Next hand, please. Next hand is Danielle Nelson. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Yes, it's Danielle Nelson. That's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And Nelson is N E L S O N. All right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Are you a neighbor? Yes. Uh, are you for or against this project? I am for the project. Okay. Could you please uh, let us know your comments? Um, as being a neighbor, I've been in the area for years. My children go to this park. Um, we have family functions at the park. We have like sports 
themes. We just like to go to the park and have fun. My children go to a daycare near the park. And we have family fun day every year. It's just supportive of the family to show their appreciation, you know, for the kids coming to the daycare. So I think that more, um, you know, thing for the children to do at the park would suit the park because it is a park and it's a family park. Okay, uh, thank you very much for taking time to call us. We appreciate it. Next hand, please. We have David Gibson. They have been allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Can you hear me? I can. David Gibson, David, D-A-V-I-D, Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I certainly do. Are you a neighbor? I am. Are you for this project or against? I'm opposed to the special exception. Okay. And uh, could 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 you let us know if there's something different than, than what you've already heard? Well, first of all, I'm in agreement with the Conservancy and with the experts that acknowledge the park is experiencing groundwater flooding, but I'm in disagreement about how to address this issue. Okay. It's practical and irresponsible to spend millions of dollars trying to engineer a high and dry athletic zone inside a 100-year um, flood zone in, in the age of rising tides. A more practical approach would be to decrease the hardscaping, install boardwalks, facilitate more passive recreation, there are better places for fields in our city, places where grass fields would solve the field crisis and add additional green space to our city rather than destroying it. Um, also, I, I bike down there all the time. And, you know, I would just, it's just a beautiful space, pretty wild. I like it the way it is. I don't want to see it change. Please okay. tell the Conservancy to design a better alternative. I'm sure there are many other alternatives. Right. Um, pretty much what I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Next hand, please. Here we have Ella Wynn Corbin. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Could you state your name, please, and spell it for the court stenographer? Sure. It's a it's an unusual one. Um, That's okay. Ella Wynn Corby, E-L-O-W-Y-N, last name Corby, C-O-R-B as in boy, Y. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. I live in Point Breeze. Okay. Are you in favor of this project or against it? In opposition against it. Okay. And there's been a lot of testimony. Is there anything additional you can offer? Yes, there is. I will do so. Okay. All right. So... Almost 19,000 people have already collectively signed petitions in opposition to this plan. Both uh -huh. RCOs have voted overwhelmingly against it, and they've submitted hundreds of letters of opposition. None of the FDR plan has ever been discussed before city council. There have been no hearings called. The Parks Commission hasn't had any public meetings since 2019. It is wrong that a privately funded non-government entity like the Conservancy can clear-cut this much public space without an explicit mandate from the public. Too many people have been disqualified and silenced from even making a comment here. It is shameful and it is undemocratic. I would like to see the board ask the Conservancy for a range of alternative plans that would save some of these trees. Um, thank you very much for calling us and taking the time. Next hand, please. Here we have Adam Woods. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, good afternoon. Could you state your name and spell, please, for the court sonographer? Uh, my name is Adam Woods, A-D-A-M-W-O-O-D-S. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Are you a neighbor? I am. I live in South Philly. Are you uh, in favor of this project or against? I am opposed to this project. Okay. And you've heard a lot of testimony before you. Is there anything different in your opposition that we haven't heard. Yeah, I would just like to state that this plan undermines the Philly tree plan, which okay. states that the preservation of our existing canopy is a primary goal for the city. It undermines the Philadelphia tree canopy assessment, which found that between 2008 and 2018, Philadelphia lost 6% of its canopy. It undermines the Philadelphia Climate Action Playbook, which states that we need to use nature as a solution and that trees help remove carbon pollution while managing heat, clearing pollutants from the air, and managing stormwater runoff. 
it's as if one hand of the city doesn't know or consider important what the other is doing or the goals it has set. The field crisis is real, but we should not be forced to choose between our fields and our natural resources. These fields need to be put in neighborhoods where kids can actually access them and where they do not require the demolition of our green spaces. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your comments. Next hand, please. Chair, we have Whitney Peeling. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Okay. Hi. Hi, could you state your name and spell it, please, for the court stenographer? Sure. Whitney Peeling, and it's W-H-I-T-N-E-Y, P like Peter, E-E-L-I-N-G. Right. Do you, swear, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. I live in South Philly. Are you in favor of this project or against? I am against. Okay. And you've heard a lot of people testify prior to you. Is there anything different that you could offer to us? Yeah, um, a bit different. I, uh, you know, at the moment, these trees are the only thing standing in the way of the rollout of more toxic artificial turf. And the dangers of that turf have been repeatedly documented locally in the Inquirer and in publications worldwide, including peer-reviewed journals. Um, the, art, the introduction of the turf would introduce toxic PFAS chemicals and microplastics into the surrounding ecosystem and have a negative effect on our children's health, including my own, my own child. Um, it's gonna poison our kids and we can't talk about supporting our young people while installing toxic turf at the same time. And these turf companies, they're profiting off of our children while robbing them of good help, good health, sorry, and a habitable planet. And I'd like the board to require the conservancy to go back to the drawing board. Thank, Thank you very board. much for your comments and taking the time. Is there, well, who's the next hand, please? Chair, the next hand is Dito Van Rijersberg. They okay. have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Hello, it's Mary Long. It's Dito, D-I-T-O. Another word, Van, V-A-N. Another word, Rigersberg, R-E-I-G-E-R-S-B-E-R-G. -E -E right. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. I live in South Philly. Uh, are you in favor of this project or against? I'm against. Okay, and we've had quite a bit of reasons why. Is there anything different in your uh, comments? Yes, I want to talk about water. Um, so raising the level of the park and displacing immersion in existing wetland with parking lots and plastic turf will displace water into other areas and water will always go somewhere. So. In addition, the former refinery site is being raised to the west by Hilco. The Army Corps of Engineers is proposing to build levees to raise the Schuylkill banks. The Navy Yard is bringing in fill and raising every building they construct to the southeast. So collectively, these developments will intensify flooding throughout South Philly. Where we have used, where, where we used to have a permeable buffer at the golf course that absorbed the water we will now have a giant concrete and plastic built environment that endangers neighborhoods where people live. So I'm asking that you please consider how many reasons there are to mandate a viable alternative to the current iteration of this plan. Thank you for your comments. Next hand, please. Here, we have someone by the name of Shondell. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Sure. Hello, how are you? Hey, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? My name is Shandell Jackson, first name S-H-A-N-D-E-L-L, -L, last name Jackson, J-A-C-K-S-O-N. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm. Are you a neighbor? Yes. Are you for this project or against? I am for this project. Could you, we've had one other person testify today, could you offer us anything different than what you've already heard? I just want to say to y'all, this is a project to this, to, for us, this is our home. Family of many generations has come here 
just places where our family gets together and have out um, family outings and have family day for us. The FDR park could be better, uh, have a better place for the youth, um, a place where we can say that our superstars started from their basketball or football career as children. It's a shame that we have to travel to a place like the Chamonix Park when we actually have the great space here. There are places like Lake Point in Georgia that serves 30 sports sports um, year round. Places like Grand Park that started on the cornfield and now has uh, 26 baseball, softball, diamond, 31 uh, multi-purpose field of soccer, football, and lacrosse, and just added basketball and volleyball. Not to mention having food and beverage service on their site and an on-site restaurant. Why can't our youth have the same? Why can't our youth have the same and share better things in life, especially when we have the area to do so? There are plenty athletics people from Philly, but one named Rasul Butler is is currently from South Philadelphia. Let's create more stars. The children deserve it, and we must start by making the things better. Thank you for taking the time to call us. We appreciate that. Next Thank hand, you. please. Chair, the next person is Beatrice Zovich. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. I thank you. Could you could you state your name, please, and spell for the stenographer? Yes, Beatrice Zovich. Beatrice is B-E-A-T-R-I-C-E. -E. Zovich, Z-O-V-I-C-H. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? Yes. Um, are you for this project or against? Against. Okay. Could Is there anything additional that you haven't heard to tell us? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so I would like to draw your attention to the sports complex on city-owned land proposed to undergo a $2.5 billion renovation, which finds room for hotels, restaurants, and entertainment venues, but not a single field for our children, which is literally across the street from FDR Park. I would also like to maintain a vacant, um, to mention a vacant lot at 3100 South Christopher Columbus Boulevard, as well as a vacant lot just across Patterson Avenue at 3400 South Broad Street, both of which are over a million square feet. When we zoom out and look at these vacant lots, it's clear that the city has space for recreational fields. So why are we being forced to choose between our children and our natural resources? Why is the city forcing more development in South Philly's most precious green space? The city needs to do better. Please tell the Conservancy to go back to the drawing board. This plan is not a good one. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time. Next hand, please. Chair, the next person is Cheryl Robinson. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the stenographer? Hi, my name is Cheryl Robinson. First name is spelled S as in Sam, H-E-R-E-L-L, -L, last name R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. -O you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm. Are you a neighbor? Yes, the same zip code. Okay, could you, uh, are you for or against this project? For the project. Uh, you've heard a couple of people prior to you. Is there anything additional you'd want to offer? Um, I'll try my best. Um, okay. Generally, generally, I feel that adding uh, the improvements to FDR Park would actually contribute to making Philadelphia more resilient against what it is facing and what it could face. Um, and that's regarding quality of life, the climate issues health wise. Um, I think it could be a sort of park based intervention on health in Philadelphia, um, because one of the top two causes in, in Philly is in relation to cardiovascular issues and the disparities in the communities that are nearby that use the parks. Um, will be positively affected. Um, I think it's effective land management, um, climate-wise, addressing the groundwater flooding, uh, creating recreation access will improve the chronic illnesses or even mental health outcomes of locals who come, like myself and my two children, one who's neurodiverse, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and actually improving health outcomes could probably improve quality of life issues and community discourse um, from increased stress. And economically, I think that it would be viewed as an extra amenity. Um, it could invite other visitors, which obviously would make money for local uh, local businesses and also improve the outside view of the area, which we kind of have a bad rep right now, especially South Philly. Um, respectfully, I think that it's a bit irresponsible to see the issues that FDR Park has seen progressively over time and not be proactive. I think that plans for public spaces have to be in favor of improving and maintaining all life, not just animal and plant life human life as well. Um, and we can do that 
with increased recreation space. Like there has to be a balance, um, a balanced consideration of all inhabitants of the space, not just plant and animal life in the space. And I think that the plan does that by keeping two thirds of the space green. And, but the, but nature has to share. We have to inhabit the park as well. So one third of the recreational space will help at least the 100, over 100,000 locals in the South part of Philadelphia. And I think that lastly, um, just as we have to, sometimes we have to shed a historic tie in order to make way for a better serving future. So just as we have to shed baby teeth to make room for better serving teeth, so we'll, it'll help us take in more nourishment, I think FDR Park has to do that and share. And I think disallowing the new build could actually continue the confinement of us into spaces that are hazardous, not functional, or spaces that just don't don't support recreation. And that's not fair to us who've been here our whole lives. Thank you very much for taking the time to call us. We appreciate it. Next hand, please. Next hand chair is Fred Stein. They have been unmuted and allowed. Yvette, how many, Yvette, how many more hands do you see? Uh, after Mr. Stein, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay. It looks like eleven more hands after that's Mr. Fine. Stein that's fine. chair. I, sir, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Sure. It's Fred Stein, F-R-E-D-S-T-I-N-E. -E. I'm with swear? the Delaware. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go first. Go ahead. I, I'm, I was just launching right in, but I should swear in. All right. My, you swear um, or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Are you a neighbor? I do. Are you I a neighbor? I am not. I, okay. No, I am not. I, okay. I work with the, an environmental organization, the Delaware okay. Riverkeeper Network. I do Are, serve um, on a board in the community, okay. uh, the East the neighbors. Okay. Are you in favor of this project or against? I'm against. Okay. And you've heard a lot of testimony prior. Is there anything additional you can offer? Uh, yes, I think that, I think I do. So we've heard a lot of a lot of information uh, about the environmental impact about building flood on um, floodplains, cutting down trees, and how that will impact uh, flooding and stormwater runoff. Um, I would I, uh, much of my presentation was going to echo that, but to respect everyone's time, I would only recommend that or or add to that that many government agencies, universities. Um, and um, entities throughout the throughout the region and the world agree with that in order to prepare for climate change and to create a sustainable green city, uh, you have to maintain the natural environment. And that comes from uh, growing uh, a Philadelphia city um, report called Growing Stronger Toward a Climate Ready Philadelphia. They talk strongly about protecting, uh, open space and the natural environment. And that's echoed by the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission in their cost effects of climate change in Southeast Pennsylvania. They, re they reiterate that and I could present, I could submit this written comment. So these quotes from these entities are, are on the record. Drexel University has put together a large consortium, including the city and have come up with the same conclusion. So it's not just coming from an environmental community perspective, but uh, agencies um, and uh, universities that are committed to protecting the public safety and health of the city are all in favor of protecting these, these trees and the hundreds and hundreds of more smaller ones that don't get the classification as heritage trees and all the, the hundreds of acres that will be lost with the um or the acres that will be lost by putting artificial turf down cutting down the trees is not a sustainable practice filling wetlands and natural meadows is not a sustainable practice covering open space with artificial turf is not a sustainable practice okay. um fdr park is already essentially a bathtub with elevated perimeters around Patterson avenue broad street the enclaves and 95, the Conservancy's plan will be filling, bringing in uh, acre or many, many tons of earth to build these sports fields 
to, to take up space within that bathtub that's going to displace the water. Um, I would only want to, my final point would be is the youth of Philadelphia definitely need outdoor recreational open space. The natural open space on the west side of the park can and does provide that. There's no arguing that organized sports can benefit thousands of youth, but city residents should not be forced to choose between natural open space that enhances their quality of life and recreating on plastic surfaces that science has shown can cause its own health problems. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for taking the time. Next hand, please. Chair, we have Cameron Powell. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Hi, this is Cameron Powell, C-A-M-E-R-O-N-P-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Are you a neighbor? Yes. Are you in favor of this project or against? I'm against. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of testimony. Is there anything different that you could add? Sure. Uh First of all, just to say that it's dumb, right? Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I would hope you could just give us more than it's dumb. But no, no, you... well, I, well, I would if you'd allow me to keep speaking. Yeah. So it's dumb to say, hmm, we already have an entire portion of our lovely city dedicated to sports arenas, Wells Fargo Center, the Link, etc. But we choose to demolish. Now, I, I don't know anybody on the zoning board personally, but it seems that you folks must not be from Philadelphia because you would know that FDR Park is a local treasure, nothing like it in all the city. And you choose to demolish and destroy this green space. The zoning board doesn't do that. The zoning board doesn't do that. We're listening for testimony as to why you don't think it should. The tree well, should the, it's, a, it's a surprise to me because you guys aren't advocating against it. Once again, so we're hearing both sides. Said, That's what we're here for, to hear both sides, sir. OK, well, no, not is, OK. This, this, That's where we are. We're here about one thing about the trees. And that's what OK. We're here it's about we're the trees. Both sides. It, it should be self-evident that there are better alternatives. For this thing to happen, it's like when you folks that get put in these positions of power. Sure, sorry, are you anyway. you're against the project? Thank you very much. Next hand. Yeah. Chair, we have Judy Stepanaski. She's sure. been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Do we see her hand? Yes, Ms. Stepanowski, could you please unmute yourself? Okay. Hi, hi, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Judith Stepanowski, S-T-E-P, as in Paul, E N. A S K I E. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> are you a neighbor? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, are you for this project or against the project? Opposed. Okay. Is there anything additional than what we've already heard? Yes. That you can offer? Yes. Okay. Um, I am a city resident, okay. and I've used the park many times. Okay. Um, I'm a birder, and one of the things, Fairmount Park, I mean, FTR Park is one of the top three Philadelphia birding areas based on the number of recorded species. 228 species have been recorded in the park, many of them migratory with limited options for places to rest and feed in the area. There's also a great number of breeding birds in the park. Mature trees are extremely important to breeding and migratory birds. Um, the biggest reason for the loss in bird life, we, we've had over 3 million birds lost in the US um, since 1970. The biggest reason is loss of habitat. And these trees in FDR Park provide valuable bird habitat. 
Um, the city of Philadelphia in 2002 signed on to the um, Urban Conservation Treaty for Migratory Birds. This is a treaty with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the city of Philadelphia was the third city in the country to sign on to this treaty. And by doing this, they, they said they would make a strong commitment to migratory bird conservation. Um, the treaty is dedicated to conserving birds in or passing through our cities through a variety of means, meaning habitat conservation primarily, but also education, um, conservation, and working to conserve, protect, and restore and enhance the tree habitat. Philadelphia is positioned along the Atlantic Flyway at the intersection of numerous migration routes, making it a particularly important, important city in terms of the vast number of migrants passing through and the need to ensure the availability of habitat where birds can quickly restore depleted energy resources. Um, in 2009, the city made a a renewal commitment to the Ur Urban Bird Conservation Treaty. And the city received a $70,000 grant um, funding as part of their commitment to restore, conserve, and protect valuable bird habitat within Philadelphia. Um, let's see. Um, the Taking of the mature trees is is totally contrary to Philadelphia's role and and as a signer of this treaty. Um, mature trees are critical for supporting birds. They cannot simply be replaced by planting younger trees. Mature trees are also important in fighting climate change. A tree takes about 30 years until it reaches maturity, at which point it absorbs the most carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Trees absorb about 40% of the human-produced carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. By replacing mature trees with smaller trees, they, it, they cannot compare in any way to the amount of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide absorbed by the mature trees. Mature trees also provide shade, and cooling of the local environment. South Philadelphia with the sports complex, which actually used to be, I just recently learned, the sports complex was part of, Fair, of FDR Park initially, and that was taken to develop um, the sports stadiums. South Philadelphia is, is totally, almost totally built um, hard space, blacktop, uh, particularly with the sports stadiums and the many parking lots nearby. These contribute to warming of the environment. Um, by taking the trees, they are, um, they're, gonna, they're gonna be reducing the cooling of the environment. Um, and particular with turf fields, it, it makes it even worse. Okay. Turf fields are 35 to 30 to 55 degrees warmer than natural gas fields. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, so I've, obviously we you, you gave us a lot of information. We appreciate your call and appreciate the interest you have in this. Could I have the next hand, please? Chair, the next hand is Michael Schreiber. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Sir, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Mr. Schreiber, Michael Schreiber. Move to the next hand. Chair, the next hand is Dina Willow. They have okay. been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Hi. Hi, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Yes, my name is Dina Willow DeFedelto, D-E-F-E-D-E-L-T-O. I am a caretaker at the Meadows, which was okay. originally actually called the Woodlands. Okay. Uh, they renamed you swear, it. Well, hold on one minute. Hold on one minute. Do you swear oh, or affirm? No, no, that's okay. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So I'm going to try to... Um, 
try to keep it short. Oh, no. Are you a neighbor? Oh, I am. Yes. Yeah. So not only am I a neighbor, but I'm a neighbor actually on both ends of the park. So okay. growing up in Southwest Philadelphia and Eastwick and, and then residing as an adult in South Philly and back and forth, taking care of my parents. Okay. So. Are you in favor of the project? I am a, a hundred percent against it. Okay. 100% could against you, it. Could you so, tell us something different than what we've already I can, heard? I can. Sure. So my, I'm going to start by saying that um, the pollution in the neighborhoods surrounding the parameter of FDR really is off the charts. My father's dead. So are countless of my neighbors. One person in every household on my street has died of cancer and the rest are suffering, suffering with like debilitating issues, health issues. Um, the communities surrounding the park are South and Southwest Philly. And we've actually been deemed a cancer cluster um, and be all because we're in close proximity to the Sunoco Hilco refinery. I mean, it's right across from us, FDR, literally. Um, the Philadelphia Water Department, the sewage, their chemical methane that burns constantly, the landfill um, that it was even built on, like our whole area, we're poisoned by the airport fuel and the radiation constantly. Um, and now that all those canopies of trees were cut down in front of I-95 at FDR, my God, it's like you can't even walk around that. It's, it's terrible. Um, I know we're, we're living on DuPont illegal dumping grounds. I mean, it's crazy, the area. And FDR Park is literally just, a, it was a, this beautiful green space in a sea of concrete. Right. And I believe that our our neighborhoods are under attack and, and the underprivileged children, they deserve nature and clean air, too. OK, my father is dead. I've had 26 surgeries because of this pollution. The only thing that is going to save us are those heritage trees. Uh, we all know there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of gaslighting. I mean, it's it's just common sense. It, it doesn't take a genius. OK, but like at what point do we say like, guys, enough is enough. I'm telling you, we can't breathe. We can't open our windows. I, I, you, you walk to your car, you have to cover your face in the morning. Like these trees are all that saves us and all, all the nonsense that is going on in our society today and, all, and, 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 and everything that's happening and all the chaos, this place truly was a sanctuary for, for the neighbors and for our community. And the wildlife there um, that has, that, that calls that place home. I mean, there's, that's re really all that's left. The deer, um, the fox, the eagle's nests. I mean, these are all part, it's an ecosystem. And if you, if you cut down these heritage trees, if you continue destroying this natural wetland and that, and, and that untouched developed woodlands, if they continue to destroy this, like that's going to make our, our community and our brothers and our sisters sicker and sicker. And then that turns into a genocide. Like this is my, like this is my family. I can't even get my mom to move because she's too old and she doesn't want to leave her doctors. And why are there, why are there real estate developers on the board of the Fairmount Park Conservancy? Why are there real estate developers? Oh, I, I think I want to concentrate on, on the, the trees in the park and Oh, okay. I appreciate, well, well, I just I appreciate everything you've said. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me. And and another thing, I want to understand that um we signed, I believe that the FPC signed a treaty with the Lenape and um a treaty of renewed friendship, and that they're supposed to protect this land. They're supposed to protect these trees. So how is this happening? You know, it's happening because the same people who are on these boards are making a percentage of privatizing this land. They're getting the percentage of it. And that's insane. You cannot, you cannot yeah, I, defend I, I, our I, land if you're getting okay. a percentage right. to develop it. Ms. Willow, I understand where you are on this and, I, and, and, and thank you very much. Next hand, please. Chair, next hand is Sarah Anton. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Sure. Hi, could you please state your name? Sarah, Sarah Anton, please unmute yourself. Okay. Chair, I hear nothing. Okay, move on to the next hand, please. Next, we have Kimberly Richards. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Kimberly Richards, please unmute yourself. 
Hi, hello. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Hi, Kimberly Richards, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S. Right, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Are you a neighbor? Yes. Are you in favor of this project or against? I am in favor of this project. We've had quite a bit of testimony. Is there anything different that you can offer? Um, I believe so. Um, I'm in favor of this project because like there was said before, uh, this park is like a staple in the community for our family. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, we bring our family there for fun games and just to get together and just to get away from some of the stuff and the trauma in the, our neighborhoods. It's just a peaceful place for us to be. Um, I feel as though the project would be beneficial so we don't have to travel out of our own community to have, you know, like a beautiful space or beautiful scenery that um, we would have to um, go to other places. I feel as though the center, the space would be beneficial to other parts of the community, especially for the youth, um, to bring just like a better morale in the city with the youth. We have a lot of issues with gun violence and things like that. And they always talk about how the youth don't have anywhere to go. I feel like this place would be a central spot where youth can meet up, we could do youth activities, we could come together as a community, we could do events. I know people are worried about like the trees. We can do events where we could plant new trees, clean up the community, you know, have youth days, things like that. I just feel like it'll make the community a better place. All right. Thank you for taking the time to call us. We appreciate it. Next hand, please. Chair, the next hand is Carol Petratus. They have okay. been muted and allowed to speak. Hello. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? It's Carol Petratus, C-A-R-O-L, and then Petratus is P-E-T-R-A-I-T-I-S. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. Uh, are you for this project or against it? I'm against, but I have two sentences to say that are different from what other people have said. Well, then said. you can say those two sentences, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm a senior citizen that lives in the neighborhood, and this natural part of the FDR park is the only accessible place that myself and my husband can go to to be in something approximating some wild nature. And that's the reason that we oppose the destruction of these trees that support the whole environment and area of um, of FDR Park. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to call us. Is there, who's next? Chair, we have Harrison, maybe they have been allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, my name is Harrison Mace. Um, I don't know why it says maybe. It's spelled H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N-M-A-C-E, Mace. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. Uh, are you for this or against? Against. Um, is there anything you can offer that we haven't heard? Yep, definitely. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, board. My name is Harrison Mace. I live near Broad and Ellsworth. I'm an environmental justice professional, and this is the park that I take walks in for my mental health. I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to the public. There haven't been a ton of meaningful ways for the public to express their concerns over time, especially as more and more have surfaced, whether this version of the plan is the right one. Sally McCabe of the uh, Pennsylvania Horticultural Society recently honored for a sustainability award at Philly's only annual sustainability award ceremony, talks about the difference between need-based design and asset-based design. Needs-based community design focus on, focuses on deficits and looks to outside agencies for, for resources. In contrast, asset-based community development focus on, focuses on honing and leveraging existing strengths within the community. 
Looking at the world as a blank piece of paper for whatever you want to impose upon the people you are charged with serving is an outdated approach to development. The current approach is what got us into the climate crisis in the first place. And the Legislative and Oversight Committee as part of city government just meant this month to learn how far off the city is from meeting its 2050 carbon neutrality goal. I'd be happy to share more about this if, if it's of use to the board's decision. As mentioned by Adam earlier, the tree canopy declined a massive 6% between 2006 and 2018. Declined. And when the clear cutting of Cobbs Creek among countless neighbor, created countless issues among neighbors, um, th that number is not looking good from 2018. In fact, it was one of the reasons council member and now majority leader Catherine Gilmore Richardson introduced the tree bill, which passed unanimously. This, this legislation was, it was created to act as the muscle behind the city council, the Office of Sustainability, and the organization Tree Philly to enforce the city's stated goals around tree canopy. What should this law stand for? It represents something, and your decision represents something too. It's 24, 2024 today, and the time to consider what natural and existing resources we have is more than overdue. I mean, even the fact that we are discussing this very bill, which was passed in the time since this initial plan was conceived, is testament to the fact that things change. No one on the Zoom will be alive by the time any new saplings reach the level of climate sequestration that these 64 some odd trees carry today. And finally, because today the board is only considering the trees with this case, I'd like you to require the Conservancy to revisit the drawing board around various alternatives that keep the trees in FDR around an asset-based design process. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for, thank you for your call. Um, next hand, hand, please. Chair, we have Dan D. Loretto. They have been unmuted. Ben, how many more hands do you have? Um, we have five more, Chair. Thank you very much. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? The name has disappeared, Chair. Okay, go to the next hand. The next person is Praise Itica. They have been okay. unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Yes, my name is Praise Idika. First name, P-R-A-I-S-E, praise is and praise the Lord. Last name spelled I-D is in dog, I-K-A. I you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I'm not a neighbor, but I'm nearby, and I use the park often. And Are I you have in favor of this project? Are you in favor or against? I'm 100% against it, and I have new information to share. You, please give I me the am a youth. Thank you. I am a youth and I've heard a lot of discussion on community, but it is very clear and evident the community does not include the indigenous people who are native to this land, nor the non-humans. And there is a mm, general tone of human superiority, which is distressing, distressing and quite, um, quite frankly, disrespectful to see. Um, the only reason why we're in a climate crisis is because people put humans above everything else. And I've heard a lot of statistics given on climate change and what different um, conservancies are doing for or against it. Um, but what I will say is we will not survive climate change if we are unwilling to change. We have forced the earth to change over and over again. And this is yet another project that is asking the earth to do unreasonable things for the, mm, the gain and the greed of very few. Um, and it's disappointing, but not surprising to see that this is happening again. People have been cut off, people are not being allowed to share their comments. Um, and I think that says a lot more about what the goal of the project is rather than it being for a community. It's for a couple of people to have a little bit more money in their pockets. And that's unfortunate because if, if people will not center the earth in our projects going forward, none of us will be able to have a comfortable life. So people need to be willing to be uncomfortable and become more creative with thinking about what community spaces can look like if we all want to live long lives. Not just me as a youth, not just you as seniors or older people, we all need a place to live. And at the end of the day, we cannot and we will never be able to create another earth. Thank you, and that's all I have to say. Thank you for taking time to call us. Next hand, please. Chair, we have Anastasia Verdanova. 
They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hello. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Sure. My name is Anastasia Vertianova. My last, my uh, first name is spelled A N A S T A S S I A. Last name V E R T J A N O V A. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. Are you in favor of this project or against? I am against. Um, is there anything different that you have to offer at this point than what we've heard? Yes. Please. Um, I hear a lot of the support for this project being in favor of the youth and for them to have recreational space. I strongly agree with that. I think it's very important. Um, I also spend time at this park and I see the children engaging with the play space. I see that development uh, and I believe it's very important for children uh, to have that green space. We have a lot of other places in the city that have that. Um, additionally, I was at the um, Lenape prayer ceremony for these trees um, and specifically was watching um, these children play, climb, interact, um, which is something that I don't think can be done with recreational sports in this space. Uh, finally, I want to uh, request that the board pay attention um, not only to the things that have been said by um, the citizens here who are for or against, but also to please pay attention to both the number of um, residents who are in opposition to this, as well as who is in opposition. It's it's the neighbors, it's those of us that live here, um, while uh, many who are in support are people who are affiliated with some of these uh, sport leagues and people who can profit from this. So I really, again, urge the zoning board to pay attention uh, to specifically um, the the number of people who are concerned and who care about this space. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to call us. Next hand. Chair, we have Lady Dandy Moranich. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Lady Danny Morovich, please unmute yourself. Danny Morenic, D A N N I, last name M O R I N I C H. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am not, but I am a local forager that has led over three dozen foraging walks in the park. Okay. All right. Um, are you in favor of this project or against? I'm against. All right. We've had tremendous amount of testimony. Um, I only need anything? one minute, 30 seconds of your time, sir. Well, you can have one minute, 30 seconds of my time, please. Thank you very much. Sure. There's, a group in, there's a group in South Philly that recycles human waste into universally usable product. It's eco-friendly, free, and the kind of group that Mayor Parker would want to use as part of her clean and green initiative. But instead of embracing it, it's being destroyed. And the group, they're called trees. Trees absorb the carbon dioxide we exhale via photosynthesis and create oxygen. And as an added benefit, they sequester carbon, keeping the area cooler, fix the soil, and filter water to keep it from flooding into our sewer system. The leaves remove dangerous pollution, especially in neighborhoods close to the highways, and can reduce ailments like asthma and heart disease, which are responsible for about 5% of deaths worldwide. And older trees do this more effectively than the newly planted. South Philadelphia is one of the hottest areas of the city, and the heat island effects can raise temperatures up to 22 degrees hotter than leafy suburban areas. Removal of trees will increase that heat. The International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health published an impact study of green space on violent crime in urban environments in 2019. It synthesized findings of 45 papers, deducing that the presence of parks and other green spaces reduces urban crime, specifically gun crime, and that was echoed by a 2022 UPEM study that found a direct correlation between more trees and fewer shootings. Based on this evidence, I would suggest that it's not a warehouse of artificial fields that we need in South Philly, but to plant and more importantly, preserve our large heritage trees. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to call us. Next hand. Chair, we have Randy Holman. They have been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you please state your name? Hello, my name is Randolph Holman. That's R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H. 
Holman, H-O-L-M-A-N. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Are you a neighbor, sir? Correct, I am. Okay. Uh, are you for this project or against? I am for this project. Is there anything that you haven't heard yet that you could offer differently? Yes. So Please. I've been a life lifelong resident of South Philadelphia. I grew up in the area, and I, I am one of the uh, original members of the Anderson Monarchs baseball team. Okay. And that on that same field, right, where I had the opportunity to play baseball, gain lifelong friendships, and learn uh, uh, sports, and um, in the teachings of Jackie Robinson, right, which I still use today. Um, on that field also was discovered uh, a young lady named Monet Davis, right? She went on to become famous around the country for playing baseball one of the, the first female uh pitchers in little league baseball and gained recognition for the whole city um in this area for being an athlete and she's going on to do great things right so that opportunity would not have been there if we didn't have those great parks and recreation fields that were maintained for us to play and become better athletes and in, in return become better people and and better citizens right so I'm advocating for the places for young people to grow, not just in athletics, but in life, right? This opportunity to have these fields, right, that that are are not uh that are not uh going to be affected by maybe like a rainstorm where okay we can't enjoy the field today because it, it's it's flooded, right? We want to have those give those kids opportunities to grow, right? And I think with this project we can do that. Right. And I think that uh, long term okay. solutions uh, will, will be great for the community, not just the surrounding community, but the, but the city and, and further, because I noticed that. So those fields that's there, the baseball fields, Richie Ashburn and now called Dick Allen Fields. I was one of the first uh, teams to play on those fields. Right. When the Phillies uh, advocated and, and they gave you money and I, we, we, we played on those fields. Right. A much different than playing in uh, Mary Ann's Recreation Center. It was well maintained, just like Mary Anderson was, thanks to Steve Bandura. Um, those fields were well maintained and they've created a lot of great people, not just athletes, but people, right? And I think we can continue to do that, right? With 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 more great spaces for athletics to grow, right? And I think it's a return on the city uh investment, not just not just for the local area, but for everyone. When the city, when the, when South Philly does well, I think we, you know everyone surrounding what does well, right? I've lived there my whole life. Like we we know about Sunoco, right? We we know about the congestion that the ballparks bring. But don't forget, we love that we love our sports teams, right? We love the Phillies, we love the Flyers, Sixers, and definitely we love the Eagles. And no complaints when that stadium sold out on a Sunday. We all love it. We can't wait for a Sunday. So we shouldn't have a problem to see those fields flooded with people, not water, but people over there having a good time playing sports. That's how I feel. I'm Randolph Holman, and I am for Mr. the Holman, athletics fields. Yes. Mr. Holman, thank you for your call. We appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Yvette? Chair, we have Susan Patron. They have okay. been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? My name is Susan Patron, S-U-S-A-N-P-A-T-R-O-N-E. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? Yes, I am. Uh, are you in favor of this project or against? I am opposed. Okay. Uh, and I know that you oppose it. Is there anything different that you haven't heard yet today? Well, I, I first of all, I... Everyone has covered most of the points, so I would just still like to make one. Uh, sure. Uh, I am a past president of Pashunk Square Civic Association and mm -hmm. also past president of Columbus Square Advisory Council. So I, I know I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of what is process and what isn't. I would just like to say that uh, Barbara Capozzi and Lindsay Scanapico had co had covered very well what needs still to be covered in this process related to the RCOs. I want to urge 
the ZBA to deny this special exception and to bring it back to the civics, to the RCOs, and continue and make it even a more transparent process. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to call us. We appreciate it. Yvette? Chair, we have Noah Sturdridge. They've been unmuted and allowed to speak. Hi, could you please state your name and spell for the court stenographer? Noah Sturdridge? Mm -hmm. Go to the next hand, please. Chair, the next hand is Sarah Anton. They've okay. been unmuted and allowed to speak. Sarah? Is that to be Sarah? I see her, but she's not unmuting, Chair. Sarah okay. Anton? Oh, right after Patron. Do you love it? Hi. Right. Could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? Sarah? Sarah Anton. Chair, I'm not getting any reply. Go to the next hand. Looks Chair, bad. we have Scott Stallone. They have been unmuted. Hi. Right. Could you state your name, please, and spell for the court stenographer? My name is Scott Stallone, S-C-O-T-T. S T A L L O N E. Right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you a neighbor? I am. Are you in favor or against this project? Dead set opposed, 100%. Okay. Is there anything different you can offer than what we've heard? A little bit. I'd like to rebut one of the uh, prior comments, and that is specifically in reference to what happens on game day during Eagle season with regards to the FDR park. It is left in a shambles. It is overrun by SUVs. People drive up on the grass. They destroy the place. That is the mentality of the people who come to the park on Sundays from out of the area, from wherever they're coming. Is I own a home in South Philadelphia. I have maintained a separate office in South Philadelphia in a building owned by P. Agnes. He is one of the, the largest developers in South Philadelphia for the last 21 years. Uh, this is not good news for the residents of South Philadelphia. This will bring uh, all kinds of problems environmentally, uh, traffic. We know about the PFAS. This is, this is a mess. There are other places. Where nobody here is opposed to group sports. I am an avid Philadelphia sports fan. I love our teams. I I watch as many, I consume as much as I can. Okay. But when it comes down to, uh, you know, having the space to do what it is that we need to do, there's got to be a better way than this proposed project. Thank okay. you. Thank you for taking on the calls. that how many hands do you have of that? Chair, we have no more hands. Okay, thank you. Um, planning commission. One, well, sorry, one moment. Uh, Yvette, I think Nicole, um, not Nicole. Chair, um, the hands that are up are on the list. Right, no, no, no. There was one other one. Um, Noah. Uh, Noah, yes, he was trying to get back on. Okay. You can see Hello, if he can Sturgis, come on. Please unmute yourself and wait for the chair. Hi, Noah. Noah Sturdridge, please unmute yourself and wait for the chair. I'm still not getting any reply, Chair. Okay. All right. Thank you. No other hand, no other hands that were on our list, right? Not on no, the list. Chair. Okay. Planning Commission. Thank you, Chair Bergman, and good afternoon. David Fecto, F E C T E A U. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir, I do. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. Uh, chairman uh, and members of the board, the comprehensive plan recommends no change to the special purpose open space at this location. This proposal enables the development of a major component of the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Park Master Plan uh, after initial phases have already been completed or are underway. 
the appellant has shown that the proposed project cannot be practically redesigned to protect the heritage trees that are currently on site. The City Planning Commission recommends that the board grant the proposed special exception for removal of 48 heritage trees. The, uh, the board will take this under consideration um, and vote on this. Excuse, next... Sorry, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, I, we should allow um, counsel the applicant to respond to the testimony briefly sure. um, and, and to the planning recommendation if they wish, and then we can we can close the record. Thank you. Okay. Please proceed. Uh, which one? M Matt? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, th thank you. It's Matt McClellan. I'm going to be very brief. A, a couple of things just want to correct the record. Uh, plans were actually received by the RCOs back in October. Um, later at the request, uh, we spent several hundred dollars, I think close to a thousand to set large printed color plans in multiple copies uh, in November because I guess the electronic copies weren't uh, good enough, but we, we did that at our dime. Uh, again, we're proceeding here, Ballard, as far as pro bono council because of our support of this project. Um, there were also 300 neighbors that signed petitions in support of the project. I, I, we didn't have their names, but I just would like to confirm that they're part of the record themselves. And they were a part of Kenya Johnson's support, uh, those um, those petitions that went in. Um, on the um, issue of no reasonable alternative, we totally agree with the Planning Commission's uh, opinion. And we think that the, the testimony that we got from our, all our ecological witnesses and landscape architects and like, I think, support that very well. There's a lot of competing concerns here on this site. And we believe that we're approaching this in a very responsible civic way. Um, as for operational concerns about safety and traffic, they really do not relate to the removal of heritage trees, obviously the removing of a tree. Uh, here we're removing 48 heritage trees and replacing them with a thousand. That doesn't cause traffic, it's about removal of trees. So again, there's over a thousand additional trees are being planted. Um, I, I would note there was no ref refuting of the issues with the RCO meeting. There was no refuting the fact that there were actually probably well over 100, if not more than 100 people that weren't able to vote at the meeting itself, even though they were clearly from the neighborhood, uh, or that there were people who may not even be from the neighborhood, let alone the city, that got to vote because they were able to pay 25 hours. Obviously, that's not how we're supposed to be running civic meetings, or at least we, we disagree with that approach. Um, comments like, we don't need people, more people coming into a neighborhood, we, we, are, we find are very sad, obviously. It's important that these, these fields are close by to public transportation, which this field is. Uh, I, as a kid, I used to go to FDR Park and I didn't live in South Philadelphia. So I think it's wonderful that we're having this opportunity. Um, toxic issues regarding poisoning kids and PFAS. Again, that has nothing to do with the issue at hand. Uh, and obviously we refute the ca characterization, whether these whether the, the fields are grass or whether they're, uh, whether they're artificial turf does not affect the issue of having to remove the trees in order to have the fields in order to deal with the plain need that the, the Parks and Rec, Rec uh, Deputy Commissioner testified at the last time. Um, and then just to just kind of rem remind folks here, because there's been a lot of stats that have been thrown out and maybe it's mis misinformation or, you know, a lot of things go out on the internet that just aren't true. The park's about 348 acres. Uh, 42 of those 340 acres are gonna be used for fields and court. 105 acres are going to be used for wetlands and meadows, 64 acres actual water, uh, and again, over a thousand trees are going to be planted. Uh, so we rely upon the testimony and evidence we prevent, present. Obviously, we support the Planning Commission's decision and thank Councilman, Council President Johnson for his support as well as the administration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we're going to take this to next Wednesday in our executive session and uh, in the next day or so, all the letters that we received, all the emails, our council's gonna have them sent to all the board members so that we can all review before next week's meeting. And we will vote on this next Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. And thank you to everybody who offered Thank you to everybody who- Thank you for all the uh, time you spent waiting and, uh, we, and council, we thank you too.